Hey there, Sagittarius. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So please keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keeping up with the format from January, we are going to be starting with a reading for Sagittarius Rising uh, first. Um, and in that part of the reading, I will be referring to the astrology and I am using true sidereal astrology here, not mainstream tropical or Vedic. Okay. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Now, this first half is going to be for Sagittarius rising. Um, and that doesn't mean that the messages that come through won't necessarily resonate for a sun or a moon, a Sagittarius sun or moon. But when I talk about the astrology specifically, that's really only going to be relevant to the Sagittarius rising because it's the rising sign that sets where things are in your chart. Okay. In the second half of this reading, I'm going to be doing a complete general energy pull. This is non-denominational or at least the non-denominational part of this reading, right? So regardless as to whatever uh, form of astrology you practice or you're familiar with, that part of the reading will probably resonate with you the most if you don't resonate with true sidereal astrology. Check the timestamps in the description box below if you would like to skip ahead to that part of the reading. Yes, I am available for private readings. So uh, check out the information in the description box below. Uh, my email address is listed there along with a number of the readings that I offer. If you would like to get a reading with me or if you would just like to get a copy of your true sidereal chart from the system that I'm working with here on the channel, hit me up and let me know. I would be very happy to provide you with a copy of your chart free of charge. If you would like an interpretation that would be charged for, I can do a astrology reading for you. I could do a tarot reading for you, or I could do a combination of both. Yeah. Just go ahead and hit me up. Email is in the description box below. Also check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Lots of good stuff over there. Yes. If you would like some extra content with me throughout the month. Okay. Wait, oh, I have to pause. Hold on. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I had to pause because I realized that I didn't light my incense. I like to um, burn a specific type of incense uh, associated with the planet. And I like to, when I'm doing these readings, and I also like to do these readings on a specific day that is associated with the specific planet. Today, we're talking to Sagittarius, so that would be Jupiter. And I am burning some cedar incense. Yeah but I wanted to make sure I got that lit before I started trying to channel your messages here. So Sagittarius, lots of good stuff coming for you. As you can see, uh, the title of your reading for this month is pay very close attention to Venus. Uh, specifically, pay very close attention to what Venus in retrograde has provided you intel on and how your sense of values has shifted and changed. Also pay attention, I'm hearing also pay attention closely to the retrograde motion of Uranus, which has also helped you to shift or be able to make a shift in your sense of self. Now, oh no, wait, hold on, I have to pause again, sorry. Nope, turns out I didn't have to pause. Sorry guys, it's early in the morning. Um, Mercury is still kind of in retrograde right now. I'm recording this on the 27th of um, January. So I'm having, I'm, I'm a little slow today. But anyway, let's get into the chart for you here. So this is the chart for February, uh, for a Sagittarius rising for February of 2022. As you can see here, Sagittarius, there is a ton of, a ton, a ton, a ton of energy between your first and your second house, okay? So the month of February is really feeling like the moment where you're being empowered to make certain changes. Um, I, I get this strong feeling. There's a very strong feeling here that you're finally feeling confident enough to fully stand in and accept this new sense of self that you have been working on aligning with realigning with or changing into and it definitely does feel like the conjunction that happened between the sun and pluto back in january right around the full moon it does feel like that's where a lot of this empowerment is coming from now that energy <clears throat> of the sun pluto conjunction is really just 
empowering what's already within you, okay? It's not like that infusion of power is really causing you to create certain changes. It's been the retrograde motion of Venus and the retrograde motion of Uranus. Uranus is direct at this time, so is Venus as as far uh, by the time we reach February 1st. But it's been the retrograde motions of these planets mostly that have helped you change or realign your sense of self and also realign with your values and also maybe even your interpersonal relationships, okay? So the focus for the, the collective for the month of February is partially the Mercury retrograde. Now the Mercury retrograde that happened, that started mid-January, uh, mid excuse me, and is going to be wrapping up in February, um, that was providing us with a time period to rewrite certain programming, okay? And for you specifically, Sagittarius, I'm feeling, this is why your message here for this month is to pay very close attention to Venus because whatever Venus's retrograde has helped you understand or uh, see differently or see clearly, that's what it is that you are meant to be putting in place, all right? that Those are the changes that you are needing to make. Um, and one of the big focuses here, yes, Mercury is retrograde, so that has been giving you the time period to uh, reshape your, well, to rewrite the programming, right? But the big thing for February is the Sun and Saturn conjunction. Now, I say, I've been saying this, the Sun conjuncts with everything as it moves through the Zodiac, and the Sun moves through the Zodiac once throughout, once per year. So any sort of conjunction with the sun really is nothing new. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's fairly, well, it is, it's average. Like it happens all the time. It happens at least once a year. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, with everything that's happening for the collective, with this, 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 with all the things that are happening for the collective right now, um, this sun saturn conjunction is something to take note of because for the collective for the month of february it does feel like saturn is creating a little bit of a checkpoint or a roadblock here and that is something that i discussed in detail in the february live stream that i did um back on the 26th of january it, it can be found in the live stream tab or section of my channel here if you missed that but if you want a deeper understanding or a deeper conversation into the whole setup of february go check that out for you specifically sagittarius this conjunction is happening in your second house which is your house of values it's also the house of money house how you make money potentially it's ruled by venus and venus has been retrograde for you specifically sagittarius rising at least venus was retrograde from your second house into your first house so um this was kind of like venus pulling you pulling you back from certain social alignments or certain cer certain ethical values or moral values or something like that um pulling you back from there getting you back into the or going back into your first house which is your house of self and your self-identity helping you to realign this uh to reshape your reality through the eyes of new values better values values that are more in alignment with yourself and you have the uh, opportunity to understand what values or which values are more in alignment with yourself because Uranus's retrograde motion through Aries, which does rule the first house, has been helping you to reshape or get into greater attunement with who you truly are, right? So as Mercury was moving retrograde from the second into your first house, just like Venus did, this was pulling you back to give you a chance to change situations in your life uh, in ways that align with a greater value system, also a greater new, oh, I'm sorry, a greater, a, a new you. And this new you is a direct reflection of your shift in values, okay? So, Sun-Saturn conjunction is happening for you in the second house. And the Sun and Saturn conjunction is creating, well, Saturn's creating this roadblock to kind of check your work here, right? So in order for you to move forward, Sagittarius, you really are going to need to put in place certain situations that resonate with or reflect this new values system of yours. But quite frankly, I feel you I feel like you feel super confident 
in this already, okay? Which is a really good thing. You do have the Ten of Pentacles here that's come out. Ten of Pentacles is representing family for some of you. Um, it's representing an end of a certain lesson, a certain life circumstance. But for some of you, I do feel like it has a lot to do with family. So some of you have closed out certain cycles with certain toxic familial ties. Um, also, some of you have gotten into a mindset or a vibe of wanting to have or wanting us to start a family with this Ten of Pentacles energy. I also feel like for some of you, you're ready to start some sort of long-term project. This shift in your values and this shift in your sense of self has kind of helped boost your confidence here for you to not only be aware of what it is you truly want to work towards in the long term, but for also you to feel confident in doing that and going after that and going for that and starting that work. And then you have the Four of Swords here. Anything else for this Ten of Pentacles? Whoa. Wow, okay. All right, hold on. Let me switch the view here because I do have a number of cards that came out. So. Uh, Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles definitely does represent a lesson learned or a, and a lesson having been completed for you, Sagittarius. Okay, Ten of Pentacles. With that, you have the Four of Swords here. Um, what I'm getting with the Four of Swords is that you, in terms of this lesson, in terms of this life cycle that you've completed, you're good on that. Like, there, you're not feeling any sort of need to worry about it, to overthink it, to rehash it. You have found peace in terms of that, okay? You decided to, to let go of the devil, let go of some sort of toxic circumstance in... Um, in in favor of rising above judgment the devil in reverse and the two of wands all right overall energy here is the three of swords page of cups the star the emperor you have a brand new emotional reality in right in front of you um there have been some toxic ties there have been some devilish energies there have been some codependent situations that have been holding you back that have been hindering your process keep have been keeping you from completing the situation or closing out the life cycle. But what I'm feeling for you here, Sagittarius, with the devil in reverse, judgment and the two of wands, it was time for you to make a decision and a decision that was right for you. And that decision came or the understanding of what that decision needed to be, what path to move forward in, which way to go is heavily aligned with the shift in your sense of self, Uranus moving through Aries, retrograde, and Venus moving retrograde, also through your your home your sign, by the way. Venus's retrograde motion was through Sagittarius. Okay, expansive points of view, beautiful things, beautiful, beautiful things. All right, so this is excellent for you, Sagittarius. Um, so whatever project, whatever long term goal it is you want to work on or get started on, go ahead and do it. Absolutely, go ahead and do it. You are being encouraged to do so. Okay, now. Uh, some other notes that I have written down here for you, Sagittarius. Mars did square up with Neptune um, for a hot second in January. And that may have been a strong learning experience for you or a strong learning time for you that was heavily surrounding the masculine energy. All right. So within your, some of you are embody most of the masculine energy, mostly others of you. It was just a situation in which it was your masculine that was being healed here. Um, but what Mars square Neptune may have brought forward for you, let's see, where did that happen? That happened in from the Mars was transiting into from your 12th house into your first house where he currently is as of the 1st of February. And as you can see, Mars was squaring up to Neptune. Well, Mars was squaring up to Neptune at this point. Um, the square has ended or the slight square has ended. So. Uh, but for you, Sag, Mars was moving from your 12th into your first house. Neptune was stationed in your third house, ruled by Mercury, teaching and learning, communication, some a little bit of technology, stuff like that. But this may have been an, a, a time period to fully understand things or make sense of them 
which allowed you to perceive of the lesson. And that's a lot of what the third house influence is for you here. Um, if you're curious as to, you know, hearing more about this Mars square Neptune situation, because it was actually a pretty intense moment. I advise you to check the live stream tab of my channel here and look for the Mars square Neptune live stream. Yes. Uh, lots of good things were able to come about. Now, as I said, Mars was in your 12th house of divine perfection, which is ruled by Pisces. Um, and, and Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. So there was definitely a strong energy with any sort of reshaping, with any sort of healing of your masculine energy or healing in terms of the actions you used to take, the ways that you used to go about things, some of those cringe-worthy moments, um, the, the ways that you may have responded or reacted in the past that were negatively oriented or toxic or whatnot, whatever. Um, that's really what the square between Mars and Neptune was working on healing. For you specifically, Sagittarius, there is a strong level of getting into greater alignment with your personal identity, uh, becoming more of who it is you truly are, loving and honoring and accepting yourself for who it is you truly are. And with Mars moving from your 12th house into your first house in terms of this, there was definitely an infusion of divine perfection or an understanding of divine perfection and unconditional love that is helping you to accept yourself, accept certain things about yourself from the past that again, you may found to be cringeworthy moments, but is helping you to really fully accept the perfection of who you are as a divine being and understanding that you don't need to be anything or anyone else than who you were created to be to begin with. I really do feel like as Mars was transiting from healing Ophiuchus in the 12th house to your first house, this really helped you heal in terms of your sense of identity. Uh, I'm feeling energies from the past of people really tried to manipulate you or some of the negative things that you may have done or the negative ways that you may have reacted or responded or some of the negative situations that you experienced were heavily influenced by the nature of others around you trying to, I'm hearing, reshape your process or maybe even just make you into something or someone that you are not. And for some of you, you really accepted that. You really tried to accept that. Yep, look at this, the Page of Cups in reverse just came out. You tried to accept that. You tried to align with that. But at this point now, that's a no-go. Page of Cups in reverse. You're not trying to, you're not trying to align with that emotional reality. You have no love for that any longer. You have no emotions for that any longer. Some of you may even feel quite indifferent. Four of Swords is in reverse here. There's nothing to think about. There's no reason to stay or contemplate or try to figure out how to make this happen or how to be emotionally invested in these types of situations from the past that were probably just draining or depleting you. Like there's, I keep hearing, this is a no-go here. There is no reason for you well, at this point, there's no longer a reason for you to try and be emotionally invested in some sort of situations like that. But I say it that way at this point, because now you've learned the lesson. Now you've received the truth of your identity, the truth of who it is you truly are, what it is you truly want. And you're recognizing or realizing that there's no, there is no reason to even try and make this and, and figure out how to do this four of swords in reverse page of cups in reverse there is no love in invested into this any longer you know you no longer have any love for that you no longer have any compassion for that for some of you you know you don't even have the time or the patience for that any longer you're not you're not acting the same way any longer you're not going about things the same way you're not pursuing things the same way any longer Anything else we want to say about that for Sagittarius? Knight of Pentacles. There's a very honorable energy about that Knight of Pentacles that just came forward. Integrity. Showing up for who it is you truly are. You've made a commitment to yourself. You have the Knight of Pentacles and the Tower. You've made a commitment to yourself 
in terms of something. I don't necessarily know how to put the rest of that into words. So you finish that phrase for yourself. I have made a commit myself, commitment to myself to do better in terms of fill in the blank. And that's creating a massive change for your life. It's also changing, making, creating a massive change in terms of your interpersonal relationships here. Yeah, look, the Three of Swords is at the bottom of the deck again. What's this tower energy for Sagittarius? What's this tower? Why is the tower here? What's this tower moment for Sagittarius? Yeah, yeah, dude. Look, the Magician and the Five of Pentacles. So what you're breaking down right now is any sense of impoverishment, is any sense of poverty. Um, and this is definitely a sense of poverty or impoverishedness that has been instilled within you because of your relationships or the circumstances with other people in the past. This is very much a misery loves company type of energy. These individuals had been manipulating you or trying to get you to see things from their end because they were miserable and they wanted someone else to wallow in the depths of their pity with them and you were an easy target. Why were you an easy target? Not because you're weak, not because you're inferior, but because you're a good hearted person. You're a caring soul. And people took advantage of that. And then they worked to make you feel dumb or make you feel crazy or like you're the wrong one or something like that in the process. But really they only did that to keep you under control so that they always had access to you and your energy. But you have made a commitment to yourself to do better in terms of this, the Knight of Pentacles, and that is creating a tower moment. And why is it creating a tower moment? Because you are consciously manifesting this, or you are consciously taking action in terms of removing yourself from this type of energy, the Magician and the Five of Pentacles. Overall energy at the moment is the King of Pentacles. You are way more solid in yourself now, Sagittarius, than you have ever been in your life. Nobody can sway you. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can stop you. You are solid as a rock. At least in terms of the truth of who you are, your true sense of self. And really that's uh, out of everything that I've been saying to you here for the past 20 minutes, that's really the most important part about this. If you if you're not if you're not resonating with anything else in this in this reading, I hope at least you're resonating with the sense of self that you've come to because that's really the most important thing here. Once you have that solid foundation, damn. Once you have that solid foundation within yourself, Sagittarius, King of Pentacles, can't nothing or no one touch you. Justice. The only reason these past individuals, these circumstances, situationships, relationships, romances, whatever, the only reason they had sway over you is because you were typical Sagittarius, Knight of Wands energy, wishy-washy, kind of here one second, gone the next, you know, that kind of energy. Not to say that you're flighty or anything like that, but you, uh, what I'm hearing is you have a very compassionate, open-hearted, and caring energy. And also, Sagittarius, you're a mutable sign. If anybody is going to be the most manipulative, manipulative, manipula, if anybody is going to be the e easiest to manipulate, it would be a mutable sign. Just because of the nature of their energy, right? It, it's just, it, it's, I mean, it comes with the territory. But I say all that to say nobody can touch you anymore because now, yeah, you're still a mutable sign and yeah, you're still willing to go with the flow and, and try all kinds of new things and blah, 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 whoop de whoop and all that, right? But you're, you're, you're solid in yourself. You cannot be swayed any longer, at least not through these negative, low vibrational, manipulative tactics. And that's beautiful. That's really the point of all of this. That's the big, big point of all of this. So in order for to really help yourself understand this fuller, fully or to a greater extent, focus on what Venus in retrograde, also Uranus in retrograde has meant for you, what it has brought up for you, how your values have been in, influenced to shift and change and grow with who you truly are in terms of your sense of self, okay? I love this for you, Saji. All right, I wanna close this part of the reading out with some oracle guidance from the magic of the unicorn oracle, yeah? Three shuffles here, one. 
close this out than my Sagittarius. This is too Sagittarius rising, actually. And this is three. All right. What do we have? What closing oracle guidance do we have for Sagittarius for the month of February? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is card number 23, soul satisfaction. Honor your uniqueness. Do what makes you feel good. All kinds of first house energy, right? Which is where you have so much of all of this energy happening. Let me just show you one more time. Look at that. Mars and Venus are going conjunct this month. That's happening in your first house. Mercury is finishing up there. It's retrograde. That's happening in your first house. Later on, next month in March, you have the conjunction between Sun and uh, Mars and Venus that moves forward and then goes conjunct with Pluto, which is our blast off point that I've been talking about. That's all happening in your first house. This is all about you, babe, and who you truly are and what it is you truly want. And so because you're in align, you're getting in alignment with this, you are bringing greater soul satisfaction into your life. Okay. Honor your uniqueness. First house energies. Honor your uniqueness. Do what makes you feel good. Right. And then the card that's come out for you here is uh, on the table. That was overall energy. The card that's come out for you here is card number eight. Open to abundance. Believe you deserve. Accept plenty and prosperity. There you go. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pause for a second, regroup, collect myself, and we are going to move on to the second half of this reading. Yeah? Stay tuned. Hey, guys. All right. So welcome back to part two of this reading. Yes, if you skipped the first half, hello. Welcome to February of 2022. So this is just going to be a general card pull uh, and general energy reading for the sign of Sagittarius. So sun, moon, rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, whatever placement you have within Sagittarius that you're curious about, this would be the part of the reading for you. This is also a non-denominational part of the reading. So regardless as to whatever practice of ast astrology you ascribe to, this doesn't have to be about that. This is just a general pull for the sign of Sagittarius. This also could resonate with a cross watcher. So please keep in mind, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Yeah. Let's get into some tarot for you, Saggy. Five shuffles here. One. What do we have going on for my Sagittarius for the month of February of 2022? This is two. For Sagittarius. What messages do we have for Sagittarius in February? This is four. Uh, I just heard fun loving. This is five. So some of you have actually recently reconnected with your purely Sagittarian, happy-go-lucky, fun-loving energy. I feel like you've gotten to a point now by this time period or within this time period, you will be getting to a point in which you can enjoy life again. A lot of, I'm seeing the 10 of wands for you right now. And this is something we've been talking about for Sagittarius here on the channel for the last two years. Okay. Almost three now, but, um, you guys have gone through a reshaping of yourself, uh, Uranus retrograde through Aries. We've all been going through that. That has helped us get into a greater alignment of the, in terms of a sense of who we truly are. And because of that, for you, Sagittarius, there is an energy of being able to enjoy yourself again, being able to enjoy life again, being able to enjoy the little things, the mundane things, where in the past you were so wrought with confusion, uncertainty, burdens, ten of wands, energy, carrying all kinds of baggage that you couldn't enjoy your life but now you can, or now you will be able to, at least if you're not there at this moment that what you're watching this video, I do feel like that's coming very soon for you, okay? What do we have for Sagittarius for February of 2022? Heart chakra, I'm seeing green. So a heart chakra activation has happened. Cleansing, clearing of the heart. Okay. 
First card out that's come out for you here, Sagittarius, is the King of Wands. Very confident, feeling very sure of yourself. I'm getting an energy here of if there's some sort of creative project that you've been inspired to work on, now is the time for you to do it. Now you're feeling that confidence to go for it. Some of you, for some of you, this project or this adventure or this thing you want to do, this thing you want to achieve, this thing you want to create is something that has been with you since childhood specifically. And now because you've been able to release all the burdens that held you back from that in the past, now you're feeling activated. Now you're feeling inspired to go for it. Now you have the confidence to go for it with gusto without allowing anyone else to come in and influence you and tell you that it's wrong or tell you that you can't or tell you that you're, you're foolish for even thinking that you'll succeed. Fuck that, says the King of Wands. With that, Yes, honey, with that, you have the chariot and the two of wands. And what this is actually saying specifically for you, Sagittarius, is that with, oh gosh, with the Hank Van as the overall energy. What this is saying for you specifically, Sagittarius, is that you are confident here, right? You have made a decision, two of wands, in which direction to move forward with. But that direction, that decision was made because you have this balance here within yourself the chariot, balance and harmony, a union of the masculine and the feminine that is happening for us here in March, uh, I'm sorry, in February specifically. Uh, Venus and Mars do co go conjunct this month, which is a big thing. Uh, but, you know, a balance, a harmony, a union between the masculine and the feminine, between your light and your dark, understanding, having actually an intrinsic understanding of the past and how negative that was or how that did not work out for you. Please do not bemoan any of that. You don't have to really, you don't have to beat yourself up all at all about all of that. Especially if you found yourself missing out on opportunities in the past because of a misalignment within yourself, which was a product of conditioning and social conditioning and all that kind of stuff, social circumstances, right? But don't bemoan any of that. Don't beat yourself up about that. If you did in fact miss out on opportunities, you needed to go through that to understand what it is you wanted and what it is you didn't want, okay? Very much law of attraction, Abraham Hicks type thing. The, the, the negative side needs to be experienced so that you know, okay, I don't wanna be going in this direction. So that way you get into alignment with something that does feel good, that is not negative, and then you say, okay, yes, I wanna go in that direction. It's only by balancing those out that you can get a full, confident, alignment in terms of what direction you're needing to move in. This is soul guidance here. This is like the soul direction or the direction that your soul wants to move in, the chariot. And you've made that decision. Two of wands, in you've made the decision in terms of the alignment you've come to. Also, Uranus having been retrograde through Aries, helping us to reshape our sense of self. Overall energy for you, Sagittarius, is the herm, I'm sorry, the hanged man, to the eight of pentacles, to the magician, to the three of pentacles to the tower. Some of you are vehemently working on yourself. Others of you are vehemently working on some sort of creative project or some sort of financial situation. Uh, also keep in mind that with Venus being retrograde, Venus has helped us to reshape our alignment with values and also our relationship to money. So some of you may have come out of a strongly five of pentacles energy in which you were experiencing a certain lack of mentality, a certain lack of abundance, overemphasis on the lacking in which you were experiencing abundance or the ways that you were experiencing lacking, a lack of abundance. Um, that's shifted, completely shifted. Like that's no longer a part of your situation any longer and that's beautiful it's allowing you to move forward yeah what else do we have for sagittarius for the month of february what other messages do we have for sagittarius for february for my sagittarius straight up walking away the eight of cups leaving everything behind leaving all the past behind that no longer serves you in favor of something new and something better the three of wands is your overall energy 
at this point. Yeah, three of wands to strength, to seven of cups, to the ace of wands, to the ace of swords. That's funny because as I was reading through this, I'm looking at the bottom of the deck now. You have the three of wands, your path forward. You have strength. With that, you also have the seven of cups. By the time I got to strength and the seven of cups, I was feeling like, okay, well, Sagittarius here is in a place where they're standing strong and even though there may be plenty of options in front of them or even though they may have experienced options in the past or confusion in the past that's not affecting you any longer you have you're standing strong you've got your ego in check you know you're holding yourself together and then and and i was hearing and feeling that you have a clear understanding of what it is you truly want instead of being lost in the sauce here with the seven of cups well to confirm that, underneath the Seven of Cups is the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Swords, to Judgment, to the Ace of Pentacles. One, two, and three aces right there. You might be seeing a lot of threes lately. If you've been seeing three, 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 that is an excellent sign for you because that means that you are definitely in divine alignment with the universe and the Ascended Masters are there with you. The number three is a number of the Ascended Masters, okay? So you are heavily guided, heavily protected, and heavily supported in this new direction, in this new venture. And now is the time for you to do it. Judgment. Okay. I want to, I want to pull some, let me put these back because what I want to do. Oh wait, no, that's the wrong way. Uh, what I want to do now is, um, I want to talk a little bit more about this eight of cups energy. Yeah. What's this, uh, what's this eight of cups for my Sagittarius here? Um, yeah, so you have the magician as the overall energy here. This is definitely something you are consciously doing. You are consciously manifesting this new. You are consciously walking away from certain things in order to manifest the new. And this is not egoic. This is not from a place of ego. This is not from a place of pain. This is not from a place of heartbreak or anything like that. It's from a place of pure balance and res res uh, reciprocity temperance there you are Sagittarius with the six of Pentacles so for many of you this is really matter of fact eight of cups whatever it is you're walking away from or leaving behind right now it's strictly matter of fact like there really isn't in terms of making this decision I don't feel like there's much of an of an emotional sense of involvement in terms of you making your decision or the decision to walk away from certain things i'm getting very much king of swords ace of swords type of energy like truth be told you know it's black and white it is what it is if the situation is not balanced not reciprocal okay if it creates a sense of imbalance in your life then it's just not something you can be associated with period no emotion involved no ego involved that's where that sense of strength came through with you having having your ego in check. It's not even about I'm walking away from you because you did X, Y, and Z to me, which quite frankly is a very valid reason for walking away from something to begin with, right? But it's really not even about that. Because remember, Sagittarius, many of you went through a situation where you were trying to figure out Four of Swords in reverse. I believe that came out in the February, uh, in the, uh, uh, the first half in the um, Sagittarius rising part of this video. But Many of you were in like a four of swords in reverse type of energy, trying to figure out how to make this happen, how to make this work. But that's been overturned now. There's no reason to sit back and think, okay, how can I make this work? Why? Because if it's not balanced, if it's not reciprocal, if it's manipulative, it's, if it's depleting, if it's draining, if it's whatever, then it's not to be involved with, period. There's no reason to sit there and try and rack your brain and try and give of yourself, deplete yourself, twist and contort yourself just to fit into a certain situation that was toxic to begin with. So no, there is really no Im real emotion involved with this in terms of how you're moving forward. It's strictly matter of fact. If it's not balanced, if it's not reciprocal, it's a no-go, period. And that's excellent for you, Sag. You are, in fact, consciously manifesting this. Uh, anything, there's something else that Spirit wants to say about this. What else do you want to say about this for Sagittarius? Spirit? Yep. 
wow okay you guys are really or at least some of you are really leaving behind some individuals that in some cases truly held the key to your heart or at least these were some individuals or circumstances or whatever groups of people that you once held really dear to yourself in your life but what you have here in terms of walking away like this again here's strength so no ego is not involved here ego is very much in check again it was your ego that was keeping you involved with these situations but at this point you are very clear on there is no more denial in terms of the heartbreak that you've experienced here two of swords in reverse with the three of swords upright and instead of playing the same old game in allowing your ego to say, no, we have to stay here because this is X, Y, and Z to me, or these people, this circumstance, whatever is X, Y, and Z to me, and I can't let that go, blah, blah, blah. No, you've reined your ego in and said, this is not beneficial for us. This causes us pain. We want something new. Three of wands to the ace of pentacles, to judgment, to the ace of swords, to the ace of wands. Like this is overall energy at the bottom of the deck here. You're holding your ego back, keeping it in line, keeping it in check, saying we want a brighter future for ourselves. We want a better path forward. We want to be working towards something greater. We want a greater opportunity. And now it is time for you to achieve that with judgment here. So in terms of walking away from this Sagittarius, whatever it is you're walking away from at this time, your ego is not standing in the way any longer. You are not in denial about the truth of the pain that you've experienced, the heartbreak that you've experienced in terms of this. And that is what's allowing you to walk towards greater reciprocity and greater balance. I love that for you. Okay, I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna get some Oracle guidance here for you from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, yeah? Five shuffles for you, Sag. One. Two. Three. Closing off guidance from the Sagittarians. This is four. And this is five. Roses kisses. Some of you may be finding love this month, which would fall right in alignment with the union between the masculine and the feminine that is happening right around Valentine's Day, actually. You guys should go watch the February live stream that I did back on January 26th. It can be found in the live stream tab of my channel here where I talked about the overall energy for the month. But Venus and, and Mars come together this month right around Valentine's Day. And here, overall energy for you, Sag, to close out your reading is the rose's kisses. So quite frankly, in all honesty, some of you may really be connecting with a soulmate at this time or meeting. Um, source is saying a match made in heaven type of situation, but Sagittarius, that happens because you are in greater alignment with the truth of yourself and you are loving yourself more because of that. And that allows real, true love to come into your life here, right? Okay. Um, it doesn't just have to be romantic though. It could just be the love that you're feeling for yourself that is allowing you or influencing you to move forward in this way. You do have two cards. One card here is card number 19, Waking the Lion, Passion. Waking the lion within you, allowing your yourself to express yourself fully, allowing yourself with that king of wands energy that I was picking up on that came out for you, uh, allowing yourself to pursue the things that truly speak to you, feeling confident in yourself, allowing yourself to walk the path that you truly align with, the path that you truly want to be on, all that kind of stuff. Last card you have is the storyteller. Well, that's Sagittarius right there. 
Some of you could be telling your story, the story of your life. Some of you could be writing a book here. Um, some of you just have a message to send. You want to speak on what it is you've experienced. You want to help others learn by teaching from yourself or from your experience in Seer. And that's beautiful. Some of you really have some artistic abilities that you really need to allow yourself to express. Because the lion here does talk about Leo energy, at least from, not necessarily from this deck, but that's what I see when I see this card. And Leo is all about self-expression. So tell your story. And you could tell your story just by walking your path and living your life. You have a message to send, Sagittarius. That's intrinsically who you are. You are the messenger. You are the orator. You are the one that wants to tell the stories, travel the world, learn the stories, learn new things, and then come back and, and share your wisdom. So do that. Okay. You don't have to be a storyteller. You don't have to be officially. You don't have to be a singer, a songwriter, a, a, a painter, or anything like that. You could just be telling your story by walking your path truly and authentically. It's really that simple. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a personal reading with me, check out the description box below. If you would like some extra content with me throughout the month, check out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below as well. And as always, if you would like, uh, uh, well, as always, please uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new here and you haven't done so already. With that said, I love you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes? Fantastic. Take care. Bye. <laughs>